everyone, it is Danny, and welcome to this update this morning. I trust and hope that you're doing fantastic and having a marvelous Monday thus far. And so we're looking at the graphic here and we've got our two areas marked uh, to watch for development as well as Tropical Storm Philippe, which is well to the east of the Leeward Island. So it is going to remain out to sea, not being a bother for anyone. And that is likely going to be the same fate of this disturbance here, likely to develop within the coming days. Now, now let's go ahead and drift on to the satellite imagery. We have quite a bit to talk about, by the way, because uh, along with our, our current systems out there, there are a couple more areas that we want to talk about. And on the satellite imagery, uh, there we can see it. So Philippe is quite prominent right now. There's that next disturbance to the southeast of it. And take a look at that cluster of showers and thunderstorms kind of pushing west. So this is going to be a rainmaker for sections of the eastern islands of the Caribbean, especially the southeast. And there's already some moisture within the area. Well, across most of the Caribbean, there's quite a bit of moisture, which is helping to enhance rainfall for some areas, which is well needed. And for the Western Caribbean, that is likely going to increase over the coming days. So uh, let's drift into the region right now now and here we can see that uh, there is all that activity some showers and thunderstorms just in the vicinity of the northwest caribbean and going to portions of the southern gulf of mexico and that is where that disturbance is but i'm not expecting to see any development of it because of the hostile conditions ahead so that wind shear is likely not going to allow for something solid to really uh, get itself together in the gulf and the national hurricane center holds that 10 percent chance of formation however However, we know that tropical cyclones are not needed or subtropical cyclones are not needed to dump a lot of rain. They're not needed for flooding because uh, with all this shower and thunderstorm activity, there can be flooding. So Cuba, the Cayman Islands, likely heavy rainfall thunderstorms uh, since yesterday, even into this morning. And uh, not as much for Jamaica, but some areas in Jamaica have been experiencing that kind of weather as well. So the continuous heavy rainfall that can induce flooding and even a lot lot of heavy rainfall that occurs in a short amount of time that can be a problem as well so please be mindful of that guys and please stay safe and then over in central america there you can see a couple of thunderstorms uh, within the vicinity of el salvador going to parts of guatemala which is dissipating right now and down in portions of northern south america there is some activity as well the abc islands remaining pretty hot and dry for the most part as it relates to the rainfall activity expected through today this is what the euro model has to show so where we see more of the shades of oranges and reds, that is indicative of areas expected to receive quite a bit of rainfall, some substantial rainfall. And as we saw, there is that cluster of those thunderstorms in the northwestern Caribbean affecting the Cayman Islands and portions of western Cuba. So uh, across Florida today, going to Cuba, the Cayman Islands, Jamaica, most of the western Caribbean for that matter, Central America, there's likely to be some of that substantial rainfall activity, potentially for some spots in Colombia as well, not as much for Venezuela and a lot less as we head over into the Guyana. So Guyana, Suriname, French Guyana, not expected to receive much rainfall as we head through today. Same story as we head to the ABC Islands and then across the Lesser Antilles, going to Barbados, Trinidad, Tobago. There could be some rainfall, some showers moving through at times, maybe some heavy downpours even. But uh, as we head further up north, headed to the vicinity of Anguilla, St. Bartholomew, St. Martin, not seen where a whole lot is expected and even for uh, Barbuda as well. But then again, there could be those passing showers or those thunderstorms, especially this afternoon across sections of Puerto Rico, the Virgin Islands, Hispaniola, and even in uh, and even in sections of the Bahamas. And uh, now we want to go ahead and talk more about our disturbances. So here we have this area. As I said, 10% chance it's going to continue drifting toward the west. And there is some pretty intense shear that is likely not going to allow for anything much to develop, as I said. So uh, regardless, though, this is going to be a rainmaker and could increase the flood threat across sections of Central America and the Northwestern Caribbean. Now, as we head to 91L, so that is the disturbance which is southwest of the Cabo Verde Islands. Here we can see that it is, well, it is cut off right there, but there's a high 80% chance of development. So there's a pretty decent chance that by the middle of the week, heading to the latter part of the week, there will be a new tropical depression, potentially a new name storm as well. And the next name to be used for the season is Rena. So this is likely going to be following in the footsteps of previous storms, such as currently active Philippe out there. And matter of fact, it will be influencing the path of the system here. So with a disruption in that high pressure system, which usually steers our storms to the west, we have that northwestward track or that trend that has been quite prominent 
it for some time now. So that's what's happening here. So this is actually not going to be a problem for anyone over the coming days. And now let's go ahead and quickly talk about Philippe. So this is the latest on it. It is sustaining those winds of 50 miles per hour, keeping it as a tropical storm and will be battling the wind shear. So it's not expected to intensify a whole lot over the course of the coming days. And we see that it is not going to be a problem for anywhere as we head through to the end of this week. Now we're heading into the final several weeks of the hurricane season within that official time period up to November 30th when we typically see formation and we're going to be seeing less development across the main development region which extends from the coast of Africa to the eastern Caribbean. We're going to be seeing less activity out there as conditions gradually become more unfavorable and less tropical waves make their way off the African coast. Where we want to watch for development is going to be the Caribbean and the Gulf of Mexico because what happens is that two things. So there are these fronts which make their way out of the U.S. and the tail end of those fronts can remain behind and try to develop into something, try to become a subtropical cyclone. And by the way, that is what we see, especially in the early part of the hurricane season here. So we kind of see that same trend now as we are going to be heading into the final couple weeks of the season, but that's not going to be the only area. Also in Central America, there are these broad low pressure areas that develop or rotate cyclonically, simply meaning in a counterclockwise or anti-clockwise fashion. And with these low pressure systems come a significant rainfall increase in the Western Caribbean and even for Central America as well. And this can induce the formation of tropical cyclones. So this is typically an area to watch as we head into the month of October and even into November as well. We can still see some systems try to get themselves together. So this is going to be an area to watch uh, as an origin point for tropical cyclones as we head into the coming weeks. And they would have a boost because of the above average sea surface temperatures. I mean, in sections of the Caribbean, the uh, sea surface temperatures are up to 31 degrees Celsius, even higher than that, maybe 32 in some areas. So those very warm waters, all that ocean heat content has not really been tapped into this season. So if anything develops here and other conditions, such as uh, the upper level winds are conducive, there isn't a whole lot of dry air, that is going to mean trouble and sometimes we see these systems rapidly intensify as well not saying that's going to happen but that is something that we have seen i mean look at 2020 for example ada ayoda those were two hurricanes which were around two weeks apart and they struck central america nicaragua to be specific and uh they developed ada developed in the latter part of october and ayota developed in november and uh initially ayota was thought to be a cat 5 hurricane but during the postseason analysis it was actually downgraded to a high-end cat 4 but uh, that doesn't take away from the damage it did and the lives of that were lost same story for ada now i'm not saying that we're going to be seeing an ada and an iota this year that is not at all what i'm saying but just going back to the fact that with conditions being just right then we will definitely see some development and uh, intensification which could be significant and so of course i'll keep track of everything for you guys and that is pretty much what i wanted to share with you in this update so i hope that you found it to be quite informative but if you have any questions please do leave them in the comments i'll respond to you once i get the chance to do so and as always remember to be with wise